Hello, this is Fred from Tactical Workshop, video number four on the uh, fixed bayonet system. Today, an important subject, the command system, how to use your leaders, activate your formations, interrupt, and so on. All right, let's take a look at the uh, order of battle of the Anglo-Portuguese army in Albuera. You can see at the uh, center of the screen, the headquarters box uh, with the uh, Army commander Beresford is uh, accompanied by his two aides de camp that will help him carry orders to uh, leaders that are farther from him than his command range. Subordinate leaders can be found by following the lines to the next boxes. For example, the second division leader, Stuart is directly subordinate to Beresford. Under Stuart, you find brigade leaders, Colburn, Houghton and Abercrombie are all subordinate to Stuart. Now Beresford, if you uh, look at his card, you can see that he can issue two orders per activation and those orders will be assigned to either divisions or brigades for example, here Stuart of the 2nd Division could be assigned a 2nd Division order. That's an objective marker that you see here that's implemented. If for whatever reason the, mar the order cannot be implemented directly, he would place it on its unimplemented side on the map. So an implemented marker would be placed on the map as such. Let's take a look at how to issue orders now. We'll use Beresford and Stuart again. In this case, Beresford can issue a direct order to Stuart because Stuart is within the command range of Beresford. He's eight hexes away, which is within the 10 hexes command range of Beresford. So if you want to issue an order to Stuart to uh, head towards Albuera, you would put the objective marker in the dwelling area there. And the order would be issued out of the two order pool that Beresford has. On the other hand, if Beresford is not in range of Stuart, he would have to either move towards Stuart and therefore forfeit his um, ability to issue an order this turn, or he can uh, send one of his aides de camp carrying the order to Stuart. In that case, you would put an order marker on the aide de camp and a similarly numbered marker on the objective marker that you want to assign to uh, Stuart. During the aide-de-camp's activation, he would move towards Stuart, carrying the order. As soon as he stacks with him, he would remove the order markers. Now those objective markers can be placed on map on their implemented or unimplemented side. And that has to do with the operational area of the objective marker. For example, the second division objective marker here has an operational area of three X's wide. That's valid for any type of objective marker. If, when placed on the map, the operational area of the marker contains an enemy unit, then the marker has to be placed on its unimplemented side. That means that the order cannot be used by the leader to head towards it. In that case, the leader that has been issued the order, or the leader issuing the order if it's in range, whether it's the aide de camp that carried the order to the uh, division leader or whether the, it's the army leader um, that is within uh, the command range of the uh, division leader, one of those leaders has to pass a strategy rating check. In order to pass it, you need to roll a die that is inferior or equal to the strategy rating value of the leader that wants to implement the order. For example, if we do this with Stuart here and roll a 7, then Stuart would immediately be flipped to its passive side. If you roll under or equal to the strategy rating, then the, the order is immediately implemented and the leader can start moving towards it when, it is, when he is activated. Now, if the objective marker is placed into a dwelling area, such as El Buera here, the marker is considered to be within the area in any of those X's 
uh, containing a house. The uh, dwelling and operational area is defined as every single house or village X plus any adjacent X to a village X. For Albuera, this is the uh, dwelling area. If a formation leader has no OM implemented on map, remember that an unimplemented OM doesn't count as an OM, then the leader is restricted in his movements. He cannot move except in the two following cases. He can move one X, but only towards a friendly depot X. So basically towards the rear. Or he can move to stack with a disordered unit or unit with stragglers uh, that is subordinate to him uh, in his line of sight and in command, possibly to help the unit uh, reform. Also, the leader could possibly use initiative to uh, move and assign himself a temporary order, uh, refer to rules 4.7 for initiative. If a leader has an objective marker on map that is implemented, then he has to move towards that objective at least one hexagon and reduce his distance to the objective, unless he has the objective marker in sight or a dwelling hex part of the objective marker operational area or an enemy unit in sight. In that case, he does not need to move towards the OM. He can uh, remain in place or move as to not increase his distance to the OM. Also, the uh, leader can move and stack with a disordered or stragglers marked unit in order to help it uh, reform in the same fashion as when a leader has no objective. Finally, the leader can also use initiative to move, uh, issue himself a temporary order which would allow him to move in a different direction than that of the objective marker. Now, when do you remove an OM from the map? There are three cases. The first one is when an army leader issues an order to remove that particular OM, either a direct order or an order transferred by Ed de Camp. The second case is when the leader becomes a casualty or the uh, leader that carries the order becomes a casualty, like an aide-de-camp would carry an order to a subordinate leader and become a casualty before he can transfer the order. And the third case is when the leader is in or adjacent to the OM's X. Remember that a dwelling OM is considered to be in every dwelling X of that particular dwelling area. So, for example, in the case of Albuera, if the leader enters one of the village axes of Albuera and the OM is a dwelling, dwelling OM for Albuera, then the OM would disappear at the end of that turn. Finally, a leader that is in the operational area of the OM may have the OM removed. It's not mandatory. Well, if the player wants to remove the OM, then he can do so. Next item is the command radius. It's important to determine whether units and subordinate units and leaders are in command. Stuart with his second division here has a command radius of three axes. You can see it there. If we place his subordinates on the map, we can see that the uh, sixth brigade commander is in range, three axes away. The seventh brigade commander is also in range, three axes away. But the fifth brigade commander is not in range of Stuart. So Stuart would not be able to um, activate uh, Colborne in this case simultaneously with himself when he, his card is played. Uh, Colborn would have to be activated independently because it's out of command. In the same manner, let's take a look at the subordinate units of the 7th Brigade 2nd Division. They are placed in the village here. Those units should be within a radius of two axes of their leader to be in command. As you can see, the command radius of that leader is two. So the uh, 28th Regiment and 39th regi uh, Regiment are in command. On the other hand, uh, that unit there is out of command and it would have to be placed under an out of command marker at the beginning of the activation to uh, remind yourself that it is out of command. Special cases for uh, extending the command range apply to units in line. For example, we can see the 28th here in extended line. 
if there were another unit of the same brigade next to it flank to flank also in line that unit would be in command because it's adjacent to a unit that is in command also in line on the other hand that unit here the counter of the unit is out of command but the extension is in command so the extension would count to determine command range similarly for units in road column if the head of the column here is in command then every single unit following it is also in command as long as they are adjacent to each other or stacked with each other now the effects of being out of commands can be found in uh, rule 433 basically a unit that is out of command if it wants to move it must reduce its distance to its leader it cannot move adjacent to any enemy unit it cannot declare a charge or assault it cannot extend formation or unlimber if it were uh, an artillery unit and it cannot change formation into anything other than general order column or road column finally let's take a look at card play to determine the order of activation of the formations during the uh, activation phase each player selects one of his cards command cards face down and they both reveal the card simultaneously in this case the french player selected Varé with a strategy rating of three and the allied player selected alton with a strategy rating of four because of priority rules alton would be activated before Varé. but in this case the player that is not on top of the stack can select one of his leader to interrupt the leader on top of the stack so for example here the french leader would select latour maubourg to interrupt alton and try to activate before him the uh, requirement for interruption are that the leader has to have a strategy rating that's equal or higher than the one of the leader that's on top of the stack and the leader cannot be uh, passive or in reserve in that case you would roll a die and uh, if you roll below or uh, equal to the uh, strategy rating of Latour Maubourg Latour Maubourg would be able to be activated before Alton and in this case Latour Maubourg would allow you to activate also within Brich, Bron and Bouvier des Eclats uh, if they are in range at the same time if you roll above the strategy rating of Latour Maubourg then Latour Maubourg would flip to a passive mode and the card would be returned to the player's hand in that case Alton would activate when his activation would be completed the card is uh, put on the activated pile and then Vary activates there is no chance for interruption in that case the stack has to be uh, finished Vary activates and uh, when he's done he's put on activated the activated pile also and the process restarts well this ends the uh, command portion of the tutorial for albuera refer to the uh, chapter 4 in the rules for command rules additional topics that were not covered in this video are ad hoc formations assets and attachments reserve leader casualties and replacements and initiative so please refer to the rules for those particular subjects Thanks for watching.